It's a new year, that means new movies, that means new stuff I'm excited about. That's right, it's time for my most anticipated films of 2017. It was going to be a top 10, but then I saw the first trailer for Alien Covenant, and that one, which had been on the list, was yanked right off, and I didn't find a 10th one. So this is going to be the nine movies I am most looking forward to. Uh, the reason I didn't fill the 10th spot is because I like to do a list of movies I am genuinely excited for, not just hopeful for. There are a number of movies coming out this year that I hope will be good, but I don't know if I actually have enough confidence that they will be to actually be excited about them. So here are the ones I'm actually excited to go to the theater and see. Number nine, Lego Batman. How weird is it that to even say that sentence? I can't wait to see Lego Batman, but it looks great. Lego Movie was great. Batman was great in that. The trailers have been hilarious. It's this wonderful, it's just sort of capturing this weird and, you know, it's a little bit parody of Batman, but still feels like a legit Batman at the same time. It's a great balancing act, and I'm really looking forward to it. Number eight, Logan. This one largely on the strength of the trailer. I'm skeptical about a number of aspects of it, but man, that trailer did sell me. I am actually now excited. This is going to be Hugh Jackman's last go, and it really do does look like they're pulling all the stops. It's going to be rated R, which I'm not like, yeah! Because, I mean, I'm, I've am i not been somebody who's really desperately needed to see Wolverine viciously tear through people with blood spurting everywhere, but the fact that they were willing to go there, to me, says they want to cap things off the strongest way they possibly can, and I am I am excited for that, and I'm intrigued by the bits of story we've gotten. I'm probably going to try and avoid any more trailers between now and when this comes out, because I've gotten enough to know I want to see it, and I don't want to find out any more about the plot at this point, really. Number seven, Kong Skull Island. Again, a good trailer can make me excited for a movie that was just kind of like, oh, that's coming out before the trailer came out, but then I saw it, I'm like, Oh, this looks like so much fun. Now, I actually kind of like the Peter... I, well, I love the original King Kong. I do actually like Peter Jackson's movie. A lot of people seem to have soured on it over time. It was one of my favorite times at the movie the year that it came out, and I do still enjoy it, but it's very dour. It has a really strong sense of fate, which is one of the things that I like about it, but I like that this film is going a different way with it, and it looks like it's just being fun and bonkers, and Kong is huge. He's bigger than he's ever been. And yeah, I'm, I, I am, I'm expecting this to be a good time. I'm not expecting a master to be, I, I'm just expecting a good rollicking time because that's what the trailer sold me on. Number six, The Kingsmen, The Golden Circle. Now this one we don't have a trailer for as of when I'm recording this, but um, so this is just completely on the strength of how much I liked the first one. The first Kingsman was great and they're bringing back Colin Firth. How are they bringing back Colin Firth? No idea. Don't care. I love the that he's back. And I'm intrigued by the whole idea of like they're going to the US and the US equivalent agency and just to see how things vary there. And I'm just, I'm excited for all the characters who are coming back. I'm excited to just go and play in this, in this world again. And I, again, much like Kong, I'm just expecting a really good time. Number five, Blade Runner 2049. Now, I, I have talked about this one already when the first sort of teaser footage dropped, so I won't dwell too much on it now, but yeah, it seems like so far, from what we understand, it seems like pretty much every decision being made on this is the right decision. They got a great director who makes thoughtful, beautifully shot films. They are bringing in Harrison Ford, but the director said that they are not going to definitively answer the question of whether or not he's a replicant. They have made, they're focusing on practical effects so that this world will feel real and lived in like it did in that first film. Seeing Arrival was what finally got me truly excited to, to actually see uh, what this director is capable of. And now, yeah. I'm pumped. Number four, Guardians of the Galaxy 2, Baby Groot. Do I even have to say any more than that? Baby Groot. Do I have to say more? Okay, I'll say a few more. I, I, the first one is so much fun, and I, there are some people I think love it a little bit more than me. I think the resolution is, 
it could have used a little work. The villain was a little weak, but it's, man, it's a good time. It is so much fun, and this trailer that we got really evokes that same sense of fun, and I love the characters being brought back. I love the ones who look like they're being upgraded from background characters to being more front and center, like Yondu and Nebula. I'm really curious to see how this whole Ego the Living Planet thing pans out with Kurt Russell's playing him, but is he's, is he the Living Planet? Is he not? Well, like, how is that working? I'm really curious. And that's, I mean, that's the thing. This, this world embraces all the insanity of Marvel Cosmic that I just want to see what they're going to throw up on the screen because they got a lot of nutty stuff to pull from, and I know James Gunn is crazy enough to use it. Number three, Star Wars Episode Eight whatever it ends up being called. I am fully back on board with Star Wars. I enjoyed The Force Awakens. I really liked Rogue One. And I'm really looking forward to episode eight because I think Ryan Johnson is a notably better director than J.J. Abrams is. So with that kind of talent going on behind the camera, I, and I'm sold on these new characters at this point, I I'm really want to see what more we learn about Kylo Ren. I, Luke's going to be back. Like, legitimately, we'll get, uh, unfortunately, sadly, a swan song for Carrie Fisher, but I, we will get to see her be Leia one more time. And you know what? In a few years, I may get tired of this. We get a new Star Wars movie every year, but we've been getting more than one Marvel movie every year. I'm not tired of those yet, so uh, I think it'll be okay for a little while. Speaking of Marvel movies, number two, Spider-Man Homecoming. Tom Holland, I think, is a great fit for this part. He was great in Civil War. He looked great in the trailer. Michael Keaton's the bad guy. I mean, how, how can you not be excited for Michael Keaton being the bad guy to this version of Spider-Man? This is wonderful. And I again, it's evoking this wonderful sense of fun and lightness and they're keeping it properly scaled. It doesn't look like it's gonna be, he must save the city. No, he's gotta deal with this one crazy guy with a jet pack. And I wanna see how that works and I wanna find out more about how his day-to-day -day life trying to be Spider-Man works and we get bits of Tony Stark, and I really like Marissa Tomei in general, so I want to see more of her on May. And yeah, I'm there's just I more. Everything that they're showing me that is in this film, I want it, I want it now, I want more. So coming in at number one, even more anticipated than Spider-Man, one of my favorite superheroes ever, War for the Planet of the Apes. Now, if I'm being honest, the trailer that we got was good, it wasn't great, but I love this series. And while the trailer didn't blow me away, there were no red flags in it as far as I was concerned. I loved Rise. I thought it was a stupid idea done wonderfully. I adore Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. This thing sort of quietly, like at, at this sort of sleeper mode is, and dwelling in my head, this has become one of my favorite franchises of the last five years. This is, stuff is so good and Andy Serkis is so good to Caesar. And this looks like it could be like a concluding chapter of this sort of trilogy of leading us into the Planet of the Apes. And I'm just pumped for this. I am so excited to see just where it goes because one of my favorite things about both films, Dawn especially, I couldn't peg it down. I didn't know what was going to happen. And it doesn't, when you see too many movies, too many TV shows, it gets harder and harder for things to surprise you and to, for things to go in directions you weren't expecting, you know, that aren't like, oh, it's a twist. Like, no, just narrate, just navigating the story in directions that you wouldn't have expected. And this series does that. And because of that, I am psyched for this movie, and it is my most anticipated movie of 2017. So that's my list. I've got nine on it. What movies are you looking forward to this year? Whatever they might be, drop something down in the comments and let's talk about it. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Council of Geeks. Please go ahead and subscribe. Hit that bell down there so that you get notifications when I put up new stuff. You can check out the Council of Geeks podcast available on iTunes and Stitcher. And until next time, this council is adjourned. Thank you.